today we're introducing the Cartwheel Good Morning series. It is essentially a tension and overall body awareness building exercise. It will look to you a bit like a Warrior 3 movement. It could look like a single leg RDL movement in strength work. And it might also look a little bit ballet like. And the backstory to this is that I have a background in dance and I think that comparatively to Aaron, I've always been able to move with a bit more tension and overall awareness in my body. So always having that awareness for a nice long line. And Aaron noticed this and he wanted to build more of that quality within his practice as he was looking more into his acrobatic movements. So eventually he started to teach this to some of our other students and the rest is history. We've seen quite a few other teachers within the community around the world start to teach similar movements as well, finding that tension going into that sort of warrior three type shape. So I wouldn't say that we necessarily own this or created this. Um, it's definitely been inspired by many other things that we're seeing out there. So today we'll be talking about what exactly the Cartwheel Good Morning is, who it's for, why we do the way that we do it, what are some things to look out for, possible progressions, regressions, as well as our recommended training dosage in order to improve in this movement. So we started teaching the Cartwheel Good Morning series forward, side, and back mainly as a means for everybody to learn how to build a healthy amount of tension. In other words, this awareness and connectedness across the body in acrobatic movements, mainly the entrance and the exit. So one example of this could be when one is really mobile, that as they're trying to enter into a handstand, that they are tight and keeping that torso awareness and tightness as they're going in, but as their hands start to reach towards the ground, that then the ribs flare, and then the lower back extends more. And that sort of movement, entering it, an acrobatic movement, will create a turbulence, a volatility, that then regardless of how much power one takes to go into a handstand or a cartwheel, that power is disturbed by that turbulence. We work on it so that we take out that turbulence over time. One population that it's particularly good for is super mobile and flexible people. When one is really mobile or flexible, it can be difficult to maintain a tightness or a lack of movement, attention, as one is trying to coordinate a multi-joint movement such as kicking into a handstand. It becomes harder to keep the hips stable, it becomes harder to keep the knee extended, it becomes harder to keep the shoulders open, it becomes harder to keep the elbows straight as opposed to bending. And so what we're training is a partial range movement, focusing more on the quality and maintaining that amount of tension in the movement as opposed to going for the full scale movement but losing the amount of tension. One other population, aside from really flexible people, is really tight people. And this is because when people are tight and they can't access a very nice extended range in their bodies, nice open shoulders, nice open hips, without the rib flare, then it can be hard for them to feel a connection throughout their body. So one example of it is as a ballerina is going into a ponche sort of position with the leg at the back and it starts to lift and the body pikes that they maintain the legs being straight and the spine being extended just with the hip pike motion without losing the control. So without suddenly the back starting to extend more or without suddenly losing balance in the foot and without the leg at the top or the leg at the bottom bending. And that can be really difficult to feel when one is quite tight because going into something like hip extension is already challenging. So how does one even fire in hip extension 
to, for example, go into a B-kick. So what's possible when one is tight would be to train the body to learn how to extend powerfully and we'll show some banded assists for this as well. And then lastly, of course, this is great for anybody who's interested in handstand work and acrobatics movements. This would be pretty good for training stronger and more consistent entrances and exits for injury prevention. So as to what the cartwheel good morning is, essentially it's very similar to a single leg good morning. It doesn't have to be weighted and the arms will be forward, maybe one up, one down, to simulate more of a cartwheel entrance motion. And we do the cartwheel good morning first, teaching the body how to pike forward and keeping the tension throughout the body. Straight back leg, kind of straight standing leg. It can be slightly bent if it helps to feel the tension, especially for those of us who are extremely mobile in the knee as well. Rigid upper body, not so rigid that one's not breathing, but tense enough so that one feels connected from fingers to toes. Essentially, in that movement, you'll pike forward, you'll come all the way up, and then stop at the top with that extended hip position. Be aware to not extend too much in the lower back when doing that. It's a really great way as well to be able to train some single leg strength, single leg balancing as well in the foot, in the knee, and then beware as you're going down and up to not rotate out or in left or right with the standing leg hip as well. So the first variation of the cartwheel good morning is piking forward and coming up. You don't have to go all the way down to touch the ground. It really at first is about keeping that tension. So Eve in this video will be showing a partial movement because she's really mobile. And for her, it will be about stabilizing her knee position. So she'll go into a quarter cartwheel good morning, only a quarter of the movement, come down, come up with control, and then she re-breathe, resets her breath at the top. So the way that we breathe in this is very similar to how we would lift weights. Inhale at the top and brace. Go all the way down, only to where the range is still controllable. Come all the way up, exhale, and then reset from there. Totally okay to start with more of a single leg good morning without the hands at all, even with the second leg on the ground if you're first testing the balance and then eventually you'll be able to straighten the leg, the back leg, it will look a bit more like a yoga warrior three and then eventually the arms will be able to go out. So eventually the lever will be long and the body will learn to control and coordinate in that long lever position and you'll be able to build that confidence to enter and exit from acrobatic movements even if it's just a handstand over time. So we first only shown the forward piking and coming up motions, but of course there are many other ways to enter and exit from acrobatic movements. So for cartwheel good morning we always we also have the sideway good mornings in which essentially we are piking over and going over sideways and when you go over sideways beware of the standing leg knee, making sure that that standing leg knee doesn't come in. We'll be training, it basically is a lot of footwork as well. So the knee will be going out, you'll be going all the way out. Beware to not overly side bend and lose connection in the flexing obliques. You wanna keep nice and long when you go out to the side and come up. And making sure as well that as you go out to the side that you don't extend and rotate too much with the ribs coming to face the sky and also that you don't curve and curl so much that you start to go down towards the ground instead so you keep it really nice and clean uh, totally okay if you're holding on to a stick totally okay if you're holding on to a wall as well for balance again going for clean reps partial ranges 
at building control before increasing the range. So the final would be going backwards. And when we go backwards, beware to keep the standing leg hip extended if possible. It's very easy to mistake the movement and go for a bent knee and a spine that is leaning backwards but not necessarily extending the hip. So that would be the most important part, finding a way to extend the hip and bend the knee and then bring the body in a nice long position as well. So from our experience, going backwards will be the most challenging. You'll have most range going forwards, then sideways. Backwards will be the most challenging. One thing to look out for when you're going into the backwards cartwheel is the position of your head. So what could happen is that the neck overly extends and then you'll get a lot of compression in the neck and then you might not feel too good after. It would be dangerous to go too much into that backwards cartwheel, extend a little bit too much and feel like one can't come out. So be very safe as you go. And you could also imagine that you're squeezing something, a small ball, in between your chin and your neck, almost like having a little bit of a double chin. And then that way you'll be able to keep that tension. And most important to feel that bracing breath. That's something that we'll cover in another video, where you keep that tension throughout the body, not breathe up and down your shoulders and not make an empty sort of a belly inflation but really starting to feel that tension build and using the diaphragm when breathing. One really important thing to point out is that even though we call it forwards, sideways and backwards good mornings, no matter which direction you're heading in, the spine is actually as neutral as possible. When you're going forward, you're hiking from your hips and you're keeping your spine in as neutral a position, it doesn't curve, it doesn't go, try to go forward, and it doesn't, your hands don't try to touch the ground. Same thing when you're going sideways. You're going sideways with your entire body, with your fingers and your toes mediating between like a, the end of, as the end of two axes, and you're going as though you were a pole and not curving over like a rainbow. And then finally the same when you're going backwards, which is why the neck doesn't extend, because the spine is actually in as neutral as possible a position, the hip is extended, and you're going backwards almost like a tilt, not going backwards as in going into a wheel. And you'll be able to see in the example as well, that when I go into the backwards good morning, that my front foot is turned out a little bit. That's just because I have limited ankle range, and it's difficult for me to bend at my knee and to bring my knee forward over my toes in a neutral position and also open my hips. I think Aaron's example is a little bit better where his foot is more in a front-facing neutral position, neutral hip as opposed to turned out, and then he's able to bend his knees, extend the hips, and bring the body back. So a couple of different variations for you. So training recommendations for this. I think that a really good way to start is to do two sets of 10 on each side going forwards and figuring out what version or what regression might be best for you. Maybe going at a partial rep and then ending up just hitting a box in front of you and then coming up or even going with a stick and then coming back up. In the beginning, what you'll focus on is balancing with your foot, really pressing down with your big toe so that you're really engaging the arch, the inner arch of your foot, and making sure that the weight's not splaying out to your pinky toe. You wanna have a nice active foot for it, and then you'll be working to stabilize the knee position, making sure the knee isn't knocking in when you're going into the forward cartwheel. And then finally, making sure that as you're going forward, you really are going forward with the back heel spun out. So I would start with doing two sets, 10 on each side, 10, 10, 10, 10, forwards, 
and then increasing the variations going into the sideways, going into the backwards as well. And for the backwards, start with a set of three to five. Really feel good in your lower back and engage your abs. Bring your ribs in for this. And then over time, you'll be able to do much more. Eventually, when you're a little bit more advanced and you're able to cycle through two sets, left, right, left, right, of all of the forward, sideways, and backwards variations, then I would say that you're in a pretty good place. Really good work to do, and you can do this three to four times a week. Uh, start with one and then build up to it. At first, it will feel like, it will feel like plenty of strength work being built, and over time, it should feel like a good warm-up. Eventually, when this becomes easier, how you can progress this is, as Aaron would show, is going into a cartwheel good morning plus a jump. So this will be training your takeoff for certain movements such as uh, the web surf and maybe even a B kick. If it's difficult to start with the cartwheel good morning and you need to find other regressions, then we would recommend putting your back leg on the ground and doing regular single leg good mornings without the cartwheel arms at the top, eventually progressing to single leg light weights, starting with six, maybe eight or 10 kilos of a single leg good morning. So the back foot will still be on the ground and the opposite hand to the front leg will be holding on to a light dumbbell or kettlebell. You'll be training your body how to go into that pike position in a safe way. And then once you're feeling strong, with the single leg good morning, bringing that single leg good morning out to a single leg RDL with the back leg coming out, already simulating the cartwheel good morning movement. And then eventually you'll be able to progress towards a cartwheel good morning. If you're interested in looking at more detailed movements without the explanation, you'll be able to check out more of our minimal movement library forms here and be sure to check out our other videos. Uh, we're starting to talk through the movements that we teach in a more elaborated form. And if you like our videos, be sure to comment, let us know what you'd like to see more of, let us know how we can improve, and click subscribe.